school district board of education meeting to order in the unlikely event of an emergency if you have to evacuate the room please note the location of the exits at this time i ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the pledge of allegiance please just remain for a moment uh, of silent reflection And tonight we remain standing for Mary Jane uh, Nancy Messing, a secretary in the district from 19, uh, 1966 through 1995, who passed away on February 4th, uh, 2020. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, 4.0 uh, presentations. We're going to start with a very exciting presentation tonight. Uh, 4.1 is growth mindset and student involvement in parent-teacher conferences with Mrs. Green and some students from John A. Scholey School. Uh, I'm sorry, say your names. Ah, welcome. Thank you. We look forward to it. Um, should we sit uh, as we are, or should we sit uh, front row? Okay, very good. Take it away. No, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Molly and I really enjoy the growth mindset, and we've taken a couple of classes that have been offered through the district, and this year we decided to sort of put it into practice with conferences and letting parents see what their children can do and letting the kids explain that instead of us yapping at them at conferences. So this was how we involved students using a app called Seesaw so that parents could really see that children are thinking about their learning and making goals and making progress throughout the year. And I just want to put in a plug for like team teaching and that at that point, because I showed a growth mindset. Mrs. Osvig approached me about doing this, and I was like, I really don't want to learn one more thing two weeks before Christmas. No, and it's true. And, and she said, listen, it's not bad. We tried it, worked with the kids, and learned how to do this together. Um, so how does growth mindset fit in? Well, we find that it's very positive for kids to see that it's okay to make mistakes, and that's part of the learning process, and that when you have a growth mindset, you actually do achieve more, and you're not afraid to make those mistakes and to keep plugging away. And we're finding that it really affects the students and how they communicate with each other. I've, the biggest thing that I see is students encouraging each other and saying, hey, you might not get it today, but you'll probably get it tomorrow. So as we said, we used the Seesaw app, and they had a personal report card that was written ahead of time. And then from that report card, they read it through the app, which was about 30 seconds of time. And they were asked to uh, explain when they showed a growth mindset at school, when they thought they were a four in their learning, so a pro, and why they felt that way, and then which areas they still felt they needed some progress in and areas to grow. So the first video I'm going to share with you is Hakabir Singh, who is in my class. We're going to watch his video, and then we're also going to watch one from Mrs. Darnley's class. Hi, Mom and Dad. Thank you for coming to my uh, conference. I want you to know I showed a growth mindset when I do my math tests. I'm for multiplication and division. I can prove it because I finished all of my math homework. I need more practice with my handwriting because I write way too fast. I would like to tell my parents I like school a lot more than weekends. I want them to know this because school was super fun and I learn new things every single day. Thank you for listening. I think we should give him a hand, wasn't that awesome? <laughs> And now this is uh, Isabel Bieber from Mrs. Darnley's class. This is Isabel. Hi, Mom and Dad. Thanks for coming to my school for parent-teacher conference. I'm so happy you could come. So far this year is fun because I have a great teacher. I show growth mindset when 
we do math together. <clears throat> we evaluate ourselves after lessons for means I know it so that I can teach the class. I am, I am a four at math. I can prove it because most of my homework papers I got four on. I need more practice with reading because I don't understand a lot what I am reading. I would, to, I would like to tell my parents I do my best. I want them to know this because I want them to know I am trying. I hope my teacher tells you I work hard. So after we asked these two lovely students if they would come in and let us show their videos, we actually asked them a couple of questions and they are prepared to answer them in front of you. So um, Hakabir, would you like to go first? These were the questions we asked, uh, what did you like most about this uh, project? Uh, why do you feel it was, what was successful of, of your video? And then what goals do you have for the rest of the school year? Um, I like that my mom, my dad, and my brother liked the video. Also, I like that the video was really fun to make. The fun process was redrawing about two times to make it. I felt like the most successful part was that I had a really good growth mindset for doing my math tests. Like when I asked for extra homework for a skill that I was not comfortable with yet. Also, I think for the millionth time, I told my parents and my brother to like school a lot. One goal I have for this year is to get the best grades possible for the third and fourth marking period. I want to do this because at the end of the year, my dad will buy me two pairs of shoes if I get over a 95% average for my final grade. <laughs> also, also, I want to... <laughs> Also, I want to try to read the hardest books that I possibly can. I want to do this so that I can challenge myself and start reading some of the books from my 16-year-old brother's bookshelf. Thank you, Hakim. Hakimir, could you could you could you could I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, what is? Do you said beacons? You like school more than beacons? Weekends. Weekends, okay, all right. And the ha how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. And so what's with the handwriting? Um, I write way too sloppy. Yeah, and is it sloppy? Yeah. Yeah, see, my handwriting is still very sloppy. So, and I write pretty slow. So if you look at my handwriting, it's like, I always say like I'm like a 10 year old. So, uh, so don't worry about that too much. But, and l just lastly, can you tell me how, how do you think, describe what a growth mindset is, like in your own words? You're smart. I like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I like making the video for parent conferences. I got to tell my parents what I'm good at. I told them I'm very good at math. I told them I'm going to show growth mindset in reading. I want to get better at understanding the book. The most successful part of doing the video conference was it was easy for me and I like doing it. My goal for the rest of the year is to get better at spelling. I'm going to practice by writing each word down until I get through the whole list. I think this is an important goal because when you're an adult, you need to write emails. <laughs> could I ask you? Could I ask you a question too? So you said you have trouble like understanding what you read, right? Um, and I've always struggled with that too, right? Like, how do you think we could get better at that? Because sometimes I'm reading a book. And I'm like two pages, and then I'm like, what did I just read, right? And I forget, and then I have to go back. So I think you're not alone in that. But like, how do you think we could get better at that? 
Yeah, the gist. That's a, that's a good, yeah. And some, you know what, sometimes it's like if you're reading for pleasure too, like if I'm not remembering it, I'm thinking maybe this book isn't for me too. So it might not be always your fault. Maybe it's just the author's fault that doesn't, hasn't captured your interest, right? But, but you're smart too. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. And the last part that we wanted to share with you is we did ask parents what their feedback was after having the conferences. So these were just some quotes that parents uh, allowed us to put in to our slideshow about the conference. So I don't know if it's easier for me to just read it. Uh, this was from my class. I really enjoyed the students' videos. It was great to see my daughter get involved in the conference. It was really nice to see my child also talk so freely on the video, sharing her ideas and thoughts. I saw my child express his desire to learn very confidently and show his growth mindset by telling me the goals he has achieved. I love how personalized the video was. Ryan was so excited to tell us his good report. I liked that they are taking ownership and know what they do or don't do in class affects their own performance. Made my heart melt. We really liked to see how she expressed how she felt about her achievements. She seemed so confident when she talked about her success at school. Um, and then how has it changed their motivation and desire to learn? The growth mindset has really helped her more be patient with herself and it's a wonderful philosophy that all students should learn. We noticed how more in tune he is in focusing uh, in the areas of weakness. She's more focused and homework time is a bit easier. <laughs> uh, we noticed that she has a much better attitude. She doesn't get down when she struggles. Instead, she says things like, I know that I'll get it. She also has taken more responsibility for her work and seems to do it on her own now. And just final thoughts as a teacher, I couldn't be more happy with how you feel about learning. You make my heart smile, so I can't say more than that. Thank you, Hockenberry. <laughs> yeah, I think we just all have seen um, the way that the students talk differently, especially the students who struggle don't give up. They are the ones, I think they're the ones who the most that we see do the encouraging in the classroom, have the positive attitude in the classroom. And it just, it, it's, a, it's a good thing to see. Hey, Pat, real quick. Um, where are my students? Mr. Singh, I can't see her. Where is she? Do you guys know what the opposite of growth mindset is? Fixed mindset. Do you know who has a fixed mindset other than Mr. Uteg? <laughs> Everyone still, in know, this room. Silly. Everyone in this room. Um, and why that's important is because you guys are learning how to learn and continuously improve. Um, and I want to tell the teachers that's extremely important. Um, we have, I come from an organization of 18,000 people and we're going through this struggle to the point where we're talking about the growth mindset. So if you guys are starting in a better place than we are and you continually, continuously improve, that's a really important thing. I liken it to when you think about how did you learn how to walk? You crawled and you fell and you stumbled. So those failures aren't a bad thing. That's what got us to the space we're in. And then at some point, we all got afraid to fail. So what you guys are doing is you're starting in a place where you're not afraid to fail. You're embracing it. And I can't tell you how proud we are of, of you guys doing that in the district going in this way. So thank you for that. This is really important. Anyone else from the board? OK. So parents, thank you for. Uh, raising your children in such a great way, and teachers uh, for promoting that social-emotional wellness. And um, I'll say what I say every time students come and present, thank you, because we really enjoy it, and it's uh, very exciting to see students. And I'll ask your parents, you know, they did a great job tonight, and they really deserve maybe some ice cream or something after on the way home. So good, nice, very good. So we'll start, uh, we'll follow that, uh, that incredible performance with some, something and someone equally as energetic as an, and entertaining with uh, Dr. Kufel who is going to go through uh, ESSA and district data, and then, uh, more excitingly, uh, our enrollment projections for 2021. I say that tongue-in-cheek. It's very important stuff. Dr. Kufel?
I know. I'm just gonna say. Although, I'm in the market for a new pair of shoes, though. So we'll see. Great job. Oh, all right. I think we're we're on here. So thank you, Mr. Uteg, for that warm and generous welcome. Um, <laughs> So enrollment projections, the reason everybody came here tonight. I'll start there um, for 2020-21. So for the, uh, I guess, last 55 plus years, um, this has occurred in terms of collecting data around the census. Oh, we're not, we're not, yeah, you can, you can, Mrs. Green, you can just hold off on, on that one. Don't, don't let the cat out of the bag there. Um, so um, each year we provide the enrollment projections to you, the board, and the community for um, to let you know that we where we stand and where we are in the planning for for next year and for years to come um, as you do look around you'll notice that there it continues to be growth in and around the, the Lancaster community um, new and expanding neighborhoods um, as we say from time to time this is truly a destination district so uh, d the district registrar Debbie Mosh and myself uh, put this together Debbie does a fantastic job and uh, what I want to do today is give you some of the highlights as you have the, uh, the data and the, um, the packets in its entirety um, in, the, in the BOE packet. The first one we're going to start with, uh, kindergarten. As we said in the past, kindergarten is where we usually turn our attention to first because that's the one that is, allows for the most variation. Um, the picture becomes much more clear uh, as we get into kindergarten registration, which is hard to believe next month, and then May and June we have uh, kindergarten screening, and then, then the dust has settled pretty well, but there's still some additional movement in the summertime. What I will say for the last four years, um, we've done a pretty good job of projecting where uh, the students are going to be and how, how many we're going to have. Um, last year was a, a little bit of a variation from the past, but uh, still within, within shooting distance, if you will. Um, the projected enrollment for next year for our kindergarten class is 406 students. So that's kind of where we start. And we've been within, um, I'd say, 15 to 20 in terms of, uh, of that projection in, your, in the last four years. The census data overall, a couple themes here. Basically, for the second straight year, our preschool students, which is defined by birth to four years old, has decreased by roughly 90 students uh, the last two years. K-12 overall decreased slightly by nine students. And then our non-public students, both in district and out of district, has also decreased. Um, and then lastly, when you compare the official beginning enrollment for this past fall with projected enrollment for next year, um, as we've predicted, uh, which is aligned with the SES study, which you recall um, occurred several years ago, there's been a slight decrease in 7 through 12, which we've predicted and we, we've seen that bubble work through the system. And there's a slight increase in K-6. Um, neither are uh, necessarily hugely noteworthy uh, and kind of what we have predicted and where we, where we are, we think we're in a very good place going into next year at this time. Um, any questions overall? From here on out, we will continue to monitor um, our our students who are coming in and out, the students who are registering with um, Debbie Masha at, at Central, and uh, continue to work with the buildings to make sure that we see, um, uh, making sure we're keeping a tab on, on the students who are coming in and, and leaving Lancaster. Questions at all? All right. I can take. I can take. So if there are no questions, I'll transition into the next, the next presentation. When there isn't enough students for enrollment, I will say we've been very fortunate that we are one of the districts in and around Western New York that has maintained a pretty steady enrollment and have seen increases throughout the course of the last decade or so. Um, so uh, we haven't had to really face that issue, but it would be causes with potentially staffing and things of that nature. Good question. All right. So on to the LCSD data, score report card, and some next steps. Um, 
So what, what I will start with is a little bit of a review. We talked last year and in the fall about ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. So I'm going to give a 30-second 30 30 um, refresher on what that is. So here are the seven indicators that each school and each district around the state um, is measured against. If you think of this as the report card, you know, if you're, you're with any of your students, your children going through, these are the subjects for which each school and each district is being evaluated against. So think of these as math, ELA, science, social studies, music, art, things of that nature. We're not going to go into detail about each of them, but it's important to recall that. And then each of these subgroups is getting a grade for each of those indicators. So all of our students will get a measure for student growth. All of our students will er, get a measure for um, academic progress. But the same with all of the uh, various race and ethnicities, um, our, our L's, our students with disabilities, and our economically disadvantaged. So that's the real quick 30 second refresher on ESSA. So on that report card, then each school and each school district is categorized by how well they are doing. From the bottom up, the bottom, a CSI school or district, is where you do not want to be. That is your overall do district or your overall school is um, in the lowest 5%, 10% of all schools in the, in the state. Targeted school improvement, um, that would uh, denote that uh, there's a subgroup that is lacking and is not, not on par with where they should be. And then a recognition school is where everybody is shooting to be. Um, that has not been identified for this past year, but for two years ago, the latter, at our last presentation, we did not know this, but the high school was named a recognition school. Um, so that's, that's great news. And then good standing is basically, if you don't fit into one of the other three categories, you go into good, good standing. That's SED's definition, not, not ours, but that's, that's kind of where those four um, lie on the scale. So this should become of no surprise. You hopefully know the, the seven schools. Here they are. So you're going to see a theme. Coma Park, good standing. Court Street, good standing. Good standing, Hillview. Sholey, good standing. William Street, good standing. Middle School, good standing. High School, good standing. That should come as no surprise, as I mentioned. Overall, the district is good standing. Things that will separate going forward, I think we, we talked about this. This does not mean that there are not areas that we certainly can improve upon and work towards. Um, there's certainly one, uh, one area that we talked about in the fall that I think is going to be something that uh, we are putting a lot of time and efforts around improving that. Um, but we are overall in good standing, and hopefully we'll have a couple more recognition schools this time next year. The report is certainly up on school report cards and uh, SED's website, um, but we can have some more detailed data uh, if need be. But beyond uh, ESSA, beyond the accountability system, beyond the test, because in Lancaster we certainly strive to go beyond uh, what the measures are for us in terms of any accountability system. And we are currently in the process of the Comprehensive District Education Plan, the five-year plan, the long-range long plan, the strategic plan. Um, and we, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the process, but prior to starting the process, we did a, a hard look back to see where we've, where we've been in the last 5, 10, 15 years and really how far we have come in that short amount of time. Uh, and it's quite impressive. And then we've spent a good amount of time looking ahead, 5, 10 years, 15 years down the road to see where we are going as a district um, for our students and for the community. So some of the things will be fr pretty familiar. Where we've been, and you've heard about these time and time again, you'll see we've talked about math goals, the career-themed academies, graduation rate, Project Lead the Way launch, Gateway, and then at high school, music and the arts, and we can go on and on and on. This is certainly not an extensive list, but a couple of the highlights. Now, where we are going, okay, based on where we've been, we have a great idea of where we're going and how to take us to that next level because in the last 5, 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of work around building the system, building the foundation for the system and building the infrastructure to support taking Lancaster to the next level. So we, were, we know where we're going and some of the things that we know are going to show up in this comprehensive district education plan are going to embody the values that you see here. We certainly believe, and you just heard it with the presentation before this in growth mindset, all students, we believe all children can learn. 
You know, um, we believe that there is a focus on continuous improvement in all that we do. And that's not just the students. That goes for the adults in the uh, educational system as well in Lancaster. Um, we believe that where we're talking about going, and I'll give you a, a little bit of a snapshot in the next few slides, but the only way we're going to get there is if we're doing it together and if we're aligned within buildings, between buildings, within grade levels, between grade levels. Um, that persistence, that grit, that perseverance. Once again, not just our students. That goes for our teachers and the educators, our administrators. And then we firmly believe, and, and I, I heard in both, uh, both of the young students here today that they want to be challenged. It's our job to challenge them to hopefully help them reach their full potential and then provide the proper supports along the way. So in the plan, you will see specifics that will hold those values tr true. A couple of things in terms of where we've been and where we are going, just to give you a little, a little bit of a snapshot. Um, about three or four, five years ago, uh, we saw our numbers uh, trending in the wrong direction in terms of Algebra 2. And why is that important? Well, in a lot of ways, math is the gatekeeper to student success after high school. What do I mean by that? Well, students uh, who go to two and four year institutions often need at least an entry level math course. They take an entrance exam or they find out themselves in a math course right away uh, at a minimum. Many students in the state and in the nation are going on to two and four year institutions and are not being successful right away. They're finding themselves in remedial math courses, they're finding themselves um, paying for courses that are not credit bearing and then they spend a lot more time in those two and four year institutions and in some cases they, they don't make it, right? So we looked at our data and we saw us trending in the wrong direction. We put a math goal in that said 80% of our students, we want at least 80% to be successful in Algebra 2 on the Regents exam um, at a minimum. And you'll see where we were and hopefully where, where we're going. So if you look in 17, 18, We had about 58%, and this number was, was pretty common, 55, 60%. We kind of were, were always in that range of students going on to Algebra 2 and being successful. So you have Geometry, Algebra 2, you have the students in Algebra 2, and then the total cohort, cohort size. 2018, 53%. This is right around when we had the goal, and, and this was unacceptable from our, our standards because that means one in two students are going on and being successful. And then you'll see this trend upward. Why do we say that 80%? Very simply, uh, for the last at least 10 years, our students who do exit surveys um, when they leave Lancaster High School, 80 to 90% of them on average say they are going to two and four year institutions. It's our obligation to make sure that they're prepared for this when they leave Lancaster. So you'll see through the work of our math teachers, our special ed teachers, our counselors, and our administrators working together for the last four years um, quite diligently and quite well, this trajectory has absolutely turned. And you'll see that next year, these asterisks show the potential for the amount of students who can go on to Algebra 2 and be successful, which is, uh, is Dan, quite impressive. Just <coughs> Please. Someone out in the audience or someone watching or whatever else might not totally understand what you say Algebra 2. So just to clarify that, students have already taken Algebra 1. They've taken geometry. So you're now at that point where after the third credit, students don't necessarily have to take another credit of, of high school math. And so that's the, the, the important position. And so you're highlighting, hey, listen, we want as many kids as possible, not only to go into that, but to be successful, because the next step would be calculus, Correct. all right? And that's the key there to enable them to do whatever it is, whether they go into psychology or they go into math, or they go into biomedical or whatever it is, that's the key p position. So if people out there didn't know that progression of algebra, geometry, et cetera, they might miss that. So I just wanted to clarify that. No, that's so a great point. Great Th job. Thanks thanks for adding that, Dr. Dr. Valley. Um, because, yes, I, I will, yeah, absolutely, 100%. And, and this, what was happening in some cases, and this isn't a Lancaster phenomenon, it's, it's, in some cases, doors are being closed prior to the students even know the door existed. So that, that's, like I said, that's, I can't say that enough. It's a lot of hard work for a lot of, a lot of people over the last four or five years. So this is some information which, which may be difficult to see from where you are, um, but you've seen this before. Once again, showing where, we, uh, where we've been the last five, 10 years. In 2010, 
we had 240 uh, total AP students. We had 462 exams, and we had 13 subjects test tested. And if we went back five, five more years, of 2005, you'd see those numbers probably halved once again. And then where we've been in the last, you know, eight, nine, ten years, we've gone up upwards as much as 875 exams, 449 students, and now we have 20 subjects uh, that students have the ability to take and test in. So a lot of hard work, once again, of our teachers and our students and the administration building this infrastructure, building the system for our students to be successful. So as we looked a little bit further in, and remember I said 80 to 90 percent of our students are going on to two and four-year institutions, and in addition to this, we have dual enrollment classes, which we, we won't get into, but that's a whole other whole nother area where we're pre preparing our students for life beyond uh, Lancaster. But we started looking at this over the summer um, and in preparation for the CDEP. And what you'll see is this, this captures the data in another manner. You have the cohort graduating class, 493, 502, 442, 482, and then you have the number of students that took at least one AP exam, 44%, 39%, 33%. That last one is not finished because those kids could still be taking the exams in this upcoming, but that's where the, that's where the data is currently. And then of those students, or of the graduating of those cohorts, you'll see the number on the far right are the ones who earned a three or above, so they are potentially eligible for AP or for college credit once they go on uh, to the two and four year institution. So that just gives another picture of where we could be going based on those values that we showed earlier, that continuous improvement, that challenging all of our students. Um, so certainly we're hugely proud of this, but we know that we can continue to work there. And the last one I want to show you, and there's, there's no data to go, well, there is data to go this with, but I'm not going to get into the data at this current time. But um, our K-3 uh, principals for the last several years uh, with Karen Marchioli, with the teachers, have been working on uh, that focus on literacy and really making sure that our kids leave grade three, um, bless you, by leave, leave grade three at or above grade level um, uh, on their reading level. Why is that important? Well, the research will show that if students leave grade three at or above reading, reading level, the rest of their career is a lot smoother. If they're below it, okay, then, then there are some, certainly some challenges that the students are going to have the remainder of their their uh, careers, right? So that's going to be a focus um, that we're going to be looking at for the next uh, certainly five years and, and, and certainly beyond. I'll touch on the process, and this is the last so slide, but I want to let you know about uh, how we are gathering input, feedback, and uh, ideas around how we can continue to push our students uh, and challenge them while pro providing the proper supports. A few months ago, we did a survey of about 20 questions, 25 questions that went out to all the faculty and uh, administration. I think we had over 300 responses, which is a great response rate. A um, lot of good feedback that we got from that that helped shape the second stage, which is the focus groups. Um, and we got some fantastic comments of areas that uh, teachers and administrators believed we should focus on for the next five to 10 years that maybe weren't on our radar. The focus groups, each of the buildings uh, we've met and we had another 80 to 100 uh, individuals uh, volunteer, if you will, uh, two, of, two hours of their, their time to help uh, provide additional input, go deeper into the survey, and provide other ways and ideas for which we can uh, uh, work towards the goals. And then lastly, we're going to have a K-12 core team, which is going to bring all the stakeholders from all of the different buildings uh, and then kind of roll up the sleeves one more time, look at the data, and uh, uh, kind of hammer, uh, hammer out a little bit of, of where we are going and, and ideas and how to get there, the plans of action, things of that nature. And lastly, we'll be presenting to the board, hopefully this, well, it will be this spring, and uh, that will be the, the, the next step. And then we'll roll up the sleeves and make sure we're doing all that we can to, to achieve those goals. Are there questions? I, too, love school more than the weekends. Just, just making, sure, making sure you're still with me. Questions, comments? Going back to the, uh, the slide uh, with the Algebra 2 uh, calculations, so that 81% uh, that is going to be uh, projected how many kids are going to go into Algebra 2. That's based on, uh, in large part, current enrollment. So those students will be testing because that's next year's cohort um, or graduating class. 
those students in, in large have either taken it in 10th grade or are currently sitting in there in 11th grade. So it's a, it's a substantial number. I, I, I don't, a few years ago when we set this goal, I looked at some of the local schools and, and where their numbers were at and that, that number probably would be higher than just about everybody's. So that's what I say. When we say we're going beyond uh, the test, when we're going beyond the accountability system, um, we're not comparing ourselves to anybody else. We're setting the bar to where we believe is appropriate for our students and, and what they need after high school. That's great to hear. Yeah. I think, and just a comment, I, and I think you said a mouthful there where we set the bar and we control, um, I think, what we're doing for our students with their best interests in mind. Uh, because when you start off with, you know, the, the designations from the state and you could go further with the rankings of schools and things like that, uh, there's many factors in the state's formula which are out of our control, right? Um, and we know that, um, but we still work to create an environment. You said, uh, you know, we're building this infrastructure. We're, bu we're building an infrastructure and a culture of success and challenge and encouragement and engagement and opportunity. Um, and I love seeing the success at the high school level with the AP courses and the academies, but I'm always cognizant of the fact, especially after this presentation this evening, that this starts at the elementary level. Uh, and then it's carried on at William Street and through the middle school, and it's a K-12 initiative. Um, so, you know, no matter what the numbers or the designations are from the state, we know that we start with a good core culture here, um, and we have people who care about it. And, you know, it, we, we fail to mention sometimes the parents, but we have parents raising good kids and trusting in their schools and, and encouraging their, their children um, to take on these challenges and opportunities, and that's that's a big part of it as well. So, um, yeah, again, congratulations, and I I love to see these numbers as well. Mike likes the numbers more than me, but um, I mean, I like the relationships, and I mean, I think it's the whole package, right? It, so. it is, and and you know, certainly remiss if I didn't jump in there because you're right. I mean, you know, Mrs. Green and her faculty and staff here, and and, and all the K three in terms of uh, we have the the opportunity to work with um, Trisha Hustle, who from BOCES, who sits on the state level. Uh, with standard development and as a math guru and she's working intimately and closely with the teachers and they certainly embody, uh, embody that growth mindset because they know that we can all improve to help our students achieve where we want them to achieve. Um, similarly at William Street, uh, this, this, these are truly K-12 goals because you can't get there without that foundation. Um, I, I know that the parents then taking the students in uh, for the accelerated opportunities that they have at William Street, you're, you're right, the community, uh, the entire faculty and staff, it's, it's, it's something to be proud of, that's for sure. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, we'll go on to 5.0, correspondence. Anyone from the board have any correspondence they care to speak of? Approval of minutes, 6.0. 6.1, could I have a motion to accept the regular session minutes from our January 6th meeting? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 6.2, uh, could I have a motion to accept the budget work session minutes from January 27th meeting? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved. 7.0, items from staff organizations. Anyone from the Lancaster Administrative and Supervisory Association? Anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Good evening. Good evening. Um, just wanted to take a moment to congratulate our students and our teachers who were involved in the musical down at the middle school this past week. And also to wish um, good luck to our students and teachers who are uh, participating in the musical at the high school this week. And we're all looking forward to the winter break. That's right. <laughs> Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Service Personnel? And anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Okay, 8.0, board reports. Anyone from the board have anything they'd like to report on? Okay, Dr. Valley, 9.0, Superintendent's Administrative Report. I have a couple of things. Uh, I'll uh, just echo Mr. Abraham's comments and say that the uh, LMS production of my son Pinocchio was this weekend and I attended yesterday's performance and it was absolutely fabulous. Uh, congratulations to Mrs. Conlon, her crew and all the kids and all the parents involved. Um, what talent and hard work and dedication went into that. Um, as you know, our music department is second to none and they proved it again this weekend. It was uh, fantastic. Speaking of the great music department, Mr. Goss from our own Lancaster High School was named the best jazz trumpet 
player in uh, Buffalo, Western New York area. I don't know if anyone knew that, but uh, did you hear that? I heard, mm -hmm. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, those who know him and have heard him play already knew that, but congratulations to Mr. Goss and the Lancaster Music Department for another deserved accolade. Uh, many of you know and are proud of the fact that uh, Lancaster Central School District has the only leadership academy in the country. Recently, many of our leadership academy students, including uh, Vanessa Uteg um, and others, uh, had the amazing opportunity to not only attend the LEAD conference in Washington, D.C., but our Lancaster leadership students organized, ran, presented, and emceed the entire conference, which had over a thousand students. Over a thousand students came from all over the country and traveled to participate, and once again, Lancaster and its young people uh, were leading the way. So congratulations to all. Finally, uh, this is Lancaster's Week of Kindness, which is a unique tradition that started several years ago, probably about five or six, and continues to grow each and every year. Throughout our school district and each, each one of our schools, there will be dress down days, random acts of kindness, presentations, paying kindness forward, backpacks for foster kids, hoops for heart events, and of course, the Lancaster Central School District Family Fun Night, just to name a few. These are uh, just a few of the events taking place, but they also, uh, but they do not capture the emotion, the excitement, and the kindness that uh, will be on full display. So I encourage everyone to take a little opportunity, uh, some time to attend some of the events and to participate in the fun and the spirit of kindness. It's going to be, uh, already has been, and it will be continue to be a great week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Valley. And uh, when I read that about uh, Mr. Goss today, the best jazz uh, trumpet player, right, yeah. in, the, in the area, I imagined him in a red velvet jacket with a black bow tie, sunglasses on, like in some dark club. Like, So I want to know where he's playing next because I'd really like to see that. I've seen him at the band shell, but I'm sure there's other venues he must be playing in to get that distinction, right? So congratulations to him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 10.0, old business. Anyone from the board have any old business they'd like to bring up? Okay, 11.0, new business. 11.1, .1, personnel items. 11.1.1, .1, could I have a motion to accept the personnel changes? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.1.2, uh, tenure recommendation. Uh, this is uh, a tenure recommendation for this evening, and then we will present uh, the tenure certification to... Uh, the teacher at a future meeting. Could I have a motion to accept that recommendation? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2 education items. 11.2.1. .1. Could I have a motion to accept the committee on special education's report? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2.2. .2. Could I have a motion to accept the committee on uh, preschool special education's report? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.0, business and financial items. 12.1, could I have a motion to accept the financial items? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.2 is a first policy reading for 5741, drug and alcohol testing for school bus drivers. 12.3 is first policy reading of 6562, employment of retired persons. Uh, 12.4 is second policy reading of 7550, dignity for all students. Uh, 12.5 is second policy reading for 6121, sexual harassment in the workplace. 12.6, uh, could I have a motion to accept the policy 5672, information security breach and notification? So moved. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.7, policy adoption 5681, could I have a motion to accept the school safety plans? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.8, uh, could I have a motion to accept the food service monthly reports for December 2019? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.9, uh, could I have a motion to accept the 2021 school calendar? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.10, uh, could I have a motion to accept the 2021 classified staff holiday schedule? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 
12.11, uh, it's a BOCES call for nominations. Um, we received a full listing of those being nominated. Um, we will then cast our ballots in the future. Can I just have an approval for the nominations? Aye. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. So moved. 12.12 is a surplus equipment award. Could I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.13 is an AIA contract, Young and Wright Architectural, for uh, our boiler and abatement at Central Avenue School. Could I have a motion to accept that contract? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.14 is a bid acceptance for our capital project. Uh, we're beginning our $77 million uh, phase of our next project, which will begin in the summer. So we're starting with bids. Uh, could I have a motion to accept that, that uh, bid? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.15 and 16 are contracts with Shannon Jeffries and uh, GPG Music, which are both, uh, both consultants for our award-winning marching band. Could I have a motion to accept those contracts? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 13.0 is public hearing. Um, we have no one signed up to speak for this evening. Uh, so before we adjourn, I'll mention that we have a budget work session coming up on February 24th at Central Avenue School at 6.30 p.m. And then we have our next regular session meeting and on March 16th at Central Avenue School at 7 p.m. With that, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for coming, everyone. All right, all right.